Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and I'm here with a new video for you guys. So in today's video, I'm going to explain the practical uses of a radio frequency reader. And in my last video, I talked about how a radio frequency reader works and its various usages. And in today, I'm actually going to demonstrate one of the usages, which is a hotel. So as you know, in a hotel, they use this type of technology frequently to open and close this, these doors. They're hotel doors. So in my project, I have four parts. Basically, my first, my, my first part will be assigning the card to the guest. So in this part, as you know, when you walk into a hotel, you are assigned a card, and that card can only open one specific hotel room in the entire hotel. I do this by having a unique writer program that I run, which collects user data such as room number name and then later the reception lady also fills in my access which is access or denied and then she scans the card on my reader to find out the unique card id and once i find out the unique card id associated with a particular card i add all of these values the room number name access and card id to a access file which i store store in my in my raspberry pi and so this brings me to my second step. Now let's say the guest takes this card and goes over to this reader, which assume it's room 403 reader. So now when this guy goes to this reader and he reads this card, the reader will read the unique card ID associated with this card, will go to this access file and see that, that this card ID is associated with room 403 and has access to this room, granting access to this room. And in the in and only when all three of these values match the room number, access, and card ID, then only do I let the guy in to the room. So as I'm constantly at constantly uh, allowing this person to the room, I'm also logging all of the attempts or successful attempts at opening this door. So let's say a failure failed attempt had accessed on the room. I still log that into my log file, even though it's an unsuccessful attempt. Just so later on, if someone wants to go over this, they can go over the log file. So this brings me to my third step. Let's say a person leaves. Let's say he's done with staying in the hotel. Now to deactivate this card so it cannot be used in the room again, the reception lead will scan it again and will and will find out the unique card ID associated with this card, go back to the access file and see that this this is associated with room 403 and will change my access to denied. So when I go back to room 403's reader, it'll see that, okay, yeah, card ID matches and room number matches, but the access will not match, showing denied instead of A, a lot, banning that person who has this card into the room. So now let's, so now to my fourth step, as you, I talked about the log file before. So let's say something suspicious happens with this, with room 403's card reader. So I have a particular report program, which can generate a report of how many times this reader was used, regardless of successful or unsuccessful, and see in between two time periods, how many times it was used. And this can just help to find some suspicious activity or just to help management side clear some things in the hotel. So now let me actually test these sort of scenarios and let's let's do it. So my first scenario is assigning the card to the guest. So now let me go to my write, my write program, which is over here, and I will run it. So now I have this one card and I'm going to assign the hotel room number to it. I will assign the person's name. I'll assign the person's name, and I'll also assign his access. And then I will read this card to gain its unique card ID. And then I will all these values get added to my access file. So now I'm gonna take this card too, just so I can test. I'm gonna put the wrong information in this. I'm gonna make this room 703, and just so we can test my room 403 imaginary card reader to see if it actually works. So now let's re let's write in this card, room 703. Let's say name for Bob and let's give him access to room 703 and let's scan this card. And all these values get written to my access file. So now let's actually take a look at my access file. What does my access file look like? If you go to my access file, you can see 
that I have indeed I've added room 403 onto my thing and I think my program glitched out let me add room 703 once again so now if I go back to my room let's close this access file and let's re-add room 703 and let's give him access and let's rescan this card okay and now let's go back and hopefully this time it's written in yeah and as you can see this time I've actually written in both these values into my access file so now let's simulate the next step which is the guest goes to the room and opens the door with the card so in this this will be a successful attempt so now let's see let me go to my read file over here and let's play it. So let's imagine this is room 403's reader. Go over here. It shows green because this is the card associated with room 403 and has access and matches the unique card ID. And as you can see on the console over here, it shows access granted. So now let's test room 703. So in this case, room 703's card will go on to, will be scanning for room 403's reader which should give a, which shouldn't allow this guy in because this is for room 703 and this is room 403's reader let's do this and so as you can see the light shines blue and access is not granted to this user so now let's let's just do this a little bit so we can get some information in my log file so i'm just gonna constantly add over here and now let me just show you guys my log file, just so you can see the actual. So as you can see over here, this is my log file. I'm taking the time, the the i the room number, the name, the access, and the card. So now, as you can see over here, it shows un it shows uh, unauthorized access because this card tried to access a room 403 reader when this is a 703 card, showing unauthorized access over here. So now, for my second scenario, let's try and deactivate room 403's card. So let's go back to the, my right thing and let's deactivate this. So I'm gonna go back, go to 403, I'm gonna put my name and I'm gonna put his access, but I'm gonna change it to denied. So he cannot no longer access this room. Once again, I'm taking the unique card ID through this and I am adding all these values to my access file. So now let's just take a look at my access file real quick. As you can see, it updated my access file for 403 to denied. So now let's go back to my read file and let's see if we can access this room. So now once again, if I scan this, it gets a unique card ID, searches over here and sees that access is denied. As, and as you can see, it was blue. So denying the access to the user. And if we just take a look at my log file real quick, you can see over here it shows unauthorized access. So, and let's say you wanted to assign this specific card to some other, to some other guy or guest. You could just do this by re redoing this process by just adding another value, or just rewriting on this card. So now let me show you guys the actual code that I've written out, and after that I'll show you guys my report file. So over here, if you go to my write file, over here I'm importing all the methods and over here I'm basically, ask, if you can see over here, I'm basically adding all my user input. So I'm asking for his access, his name, and his room number. And then over here when I say to scan the card, I'm actually scanning the unique card ID. And as you can see over here, I am basically just appending all these values to my access file and basically that's my write program which writes onto my, a card. So let's take a look at my read program. So in my read program I'm basically check I'm basically um, checking over here if all my three values match. So as you can see over here I'm checking for door, I'm checking for his access I'm, and I'm checking for the unique card ID associated with this. So now Let's, if you go over here, you can see I'm checking these values and I'm also saying access does not match if it doesn't match and unauthor unauthorized access if that happens. So this is basically my read file and so, I mean read program. And now let me show you guys my report program. So in my report program, this is where like let's say management wants to find out what 
if something suspicious activity is going on, they can find out by just putting two time periods and finding out who accessed through this time. So let's go back to my log file just to see the range of time that we want to use. So of course, since it's on f smaller scale, I'll do like minute differences because obviously I can't just go around scanning this car multiple times a day. So I'll, for my first time, I'll do 1853.56 and I'll run my report program and I'll do 18 as my hour. Let me just go back to my log file real quick. 53. And then let me just take a look again. And 56. So I've inputted and then I'm doing till what, till what hour. So I'll do 18. I'll do 54, let's say, and I'll do 59 as my second. So as you can see, it gives me all the all the times that I access this card. Even it even shows the unsuccessful and successful attempts. So you can see over here, it gives gave me the range of range of times I use this card reader. And as you can see, I'm not just printing the entire list because this obviously has like eight values in it, and it only gave me back five values. So this is my project guys and thank you guys for watching and I'm basically simulating what goes on in a hotel between a room and a room and a card and thank you guys for watching and be on guard for my next video.